majorly we are focusing on the water logging stress during the kharif or summer season for especially for the summer season and heat stress occurs normally when we are growing the spring maize so we are targeting the heat stress problem during the spring season at the reproductive stage because then when the reproductive phase comes then it coincide with the april or may month when the uh, this temperature rises up to 42 in the punjab conditions so and the target diseases uh, most of the which are the uh, in punjab is the southern leaf blight fusarium uh, stock rot bacterial stock rot shoot blight and now this banded leaf and sheet blight has been very devastating nowadays and nutritional traits we have collaborative project with dr santhil on uh, combining the this uh, opaque to crtb r1 lycopene e genes and uh, so we are targeting for the shrunken to and the vitamin e gene so we have successfully in through this dbt network project we have uh, uh, combined this opaque 2 and the vita pro vitamin a genes uh, this pathway genes beta carotene the crtb hydroxylase gene and lycopene which uh, when we uh, mutate this uh, those two the genes uh, that will accumulate the beta carotene more in that case so uh, this both gene opaque 2 that is very uh, uh, mutation in opaque 2 gene causes the uh, uh, elevates the levels of the lysine and the tryptophan okay and so this both uh, genes uh, three genes we have pyramided or stacked in the elite uh, lines of qlm 11 12 13 and 14 four inbred lines and these four inbred lines are the uh, parental lines of two uh, main hybrids uh, which are grown widely in the northwest uh, plains uh, northern region of the india that is blunt and the pmh1 so by uh, inter uh, intergressing these genes the lysine and the tryptophan level has been increased and uh, also the beta carotene level which is in in parental line it is uh, approximately 1 to 2 ppm while in uh, this uh, reconstituted uh, hybrids it ranges from 6 to 9 ppm so we have uh, targeted uh, actually uh, harvest plus target is about up to 15 ppm but we achieved up to 9 ppm and uh, this work was uh, has been published in the scientific report and we have also uh, uh, Characterized earlier, we don't uh, have the germ plasm characterized for the uh, uh, vitamin E tocopherols uh, present in the maize. So we uh, 64 of the in inbred lines that were characterized for the tocopherols oil content, and uh, we uh, estimated. And some of the lines have very high to alpha tocopherol content. Uh, some lines have delta tocopherols. Uh, so in this way, we have uh, also then. Uh, you can say markers were also employed along with the biochemical analysis and on the basis of biochemical and on the marker analysis we have selected those line because there are some modifiers also even the marker showing the presence of allele favorable allele doesn't mean that it ha is has the high content of the uh tocopherol so on the basis of that uh, uh, selecting of the modifiers uh, we have selected some of the lines now these lines are in crossing program for uh, stacking with other genes like opaque 2 uh, or uh, pro vitamin a and also with the shrunken 2 gene and in this uh, study we have also developed the robust marker system because the markers which are reported earlier they are not uh, giving the allelic differences uh, for different uh, haplotypes like 00 haplotype is the most favorable for the vitamin e uh, content tocopherol alpha content as compared to the 07 or 0 uh, 118 uh, a haplotype so we have developed a multiplex marker system which uh, clearly distinguish all these three types of uh, haplotypes 
So then uh, moving to this after bio uh, this mapping of QTL for southern leaf blight resistance uh, from the lot of germ plasm screening, we have identified two promising uh, inbred lines, uh, LM5 and CML uh, uh, CM139, which are uh, resistant to the southern leaf blight, or we can say Medis leaf blight, which is caused by the dress cells Medis and race. Oh, oh, normally you all of you know about the uh, this uh, uh, pathogen has three races O, T, and C. Uh, T CMST is for the text that is specifically present the text uh, uh, cytoplasmic milstrel line, and uh, C is specific to the China lines. So here in our conditions, we have the O race, which is prevalent. And to that race, uh, we identify two uh, good lines which are resistant. And uh, uh, we crossed it with the highly susceptible line individually and developed the two mapping populations. So uh, we have used the SSR markers. First of all, we have a map, this uh, map which, which we have developed here, chromosome 3, that is using uh, approximately 170 polymorphic SSR markers are used, and we got the uh, four QTLs on chromosome 3, uh, 7, uh, and 8. And uh, out, uh, out of these three, uh, four QTL, two are present on the eight chromosome. The QTL which is present on chromosome this uh, three, this QSLB, we, uh, we designated as QSLB 3.1. It uh, uh, explained the uh, approximately 40% phenotypic variance. So we thought it is as a major QTL and further we find map written on the real population using more SSR markers within the those regions uh, which are available. Then after uh, again we developed the map and did the QTL mapping. Uh, then more SSR markers are designed and finally we have uh, this map generated high density map uh, region of the chromosome 3 and we mapped it with the in the region of MSR1 and MSR20 this SLB 3.1 and this uh, region is uh, approximately 296 kb physically it is 296 kb and it uh, uh, possesses approximately uh, not approximately six candidate genes so with that six candidate genes uh, we did the qrt pcr to study which of the genes are uh, potential candidate gene for the slb resistance so from the qp uh, pc uh, qrt pcr analysis uh, we shortlisted two genes uh, which are belonging to lipid oxidation and the and another is um, involved in the signaling pathway that is a uh, jasmonic signaling pathway that uh, uh, has the role in the defense response. So we uh, then uh, shortlist that two genes may be the candidate genes for the SLB resistance. So still we are working on those two genes and another mapping population that is uh, uh, that work is done by a PhD student. Another in uh, this uh, cross LM5 into CM140. We have also, uh, you can say, map the QTL for SLB resistance on chromosome 8, which is a major with uh, a more, it explained the phenotypic variance of approximately 20%, this uh, the, uh, one. And uh, then uh, it this QTL was also fine mapped and then we went to the translational research that is then we combined these two qtls because a uh, single qtl has uh, uh, its effect different from the two qtl normally we know for the durable resistance uh, and to overcome the uh, you can say pathogen uh, uh, evaluation that pyramiding is uh, important so we have combined those two qtls qslb 3.1 three, uh, actually it was located in the hotspot region which was also reported by other scientists and uh, another q uh, slb 8.1 so we pyramided this these two qtls in the background of uh, cm140 this is cr uh, this crossing scheme was followed to uh, where the pyramidal lines, we separately uh, crossed C, uh, this uh, 
CM139 with CM140, LM5 backcrossed. And after going for BC2, F1 and each generation, we have also validated for the SLB uh, phenotypically and the best uh, along with the markers. Okay, so which are having the both flanking because in QTL you are using the uh, uh, the peak where it is there. You have to use the both flanking mark uh, in, in markers for uh, to follow the region. Okay, so uh, we have done the foreground selection and the background selection are also not much background selection, but mainly we focused on the foreground and the phenotypic evaluation. And then we have made a fine after in BC to F1 after selecting uh, three plants from here and three from other cross, we make a complex cross F1. That was further, you can say, uh, self to generate the F2 mapping, uh, F2 population, and then. Uh, in, on F2, we applied the foreground selection and the phenotypic selection and uh, in which are having the best, uh, you can say, pyramided lines that were uh, best lines uh, uh, with respect to disease response and with respect to markers uh, that lines were selected. And then uh, this uh, we have recently published in this Indian Journal of Agriculture Sciences. So. In uh, like here, I just uh, uh, go, go through that. Uh, suppose in BC to F1, we have total uh, analyzed 137 plants, and uh, 40 of them has QSLB 3.1 in heterozygous form for both the markers, and 57 recombinants. Recombinants here means one marker may be hetero, other marker is not type like that. Similarly, other marker may be hetero. No, uh, in uh, uh, marker one is hetero, marker two is uh, not. Uh, uh, it is of recurrent type. And uh, uh, similarly, further marker two is hetero, and uh, marker one is of recurrent parent type. That we call, uh, characterize them into recombinants. And 40 of the plants are of uh, total uh, for both the marker. They are of uh, recurrent parent type. So from these uh, which are uh, hetero. We have selected and selected, and we have taken uh, uh, these uh, combinations to generate the F2s. Uh, from both the crosses, we have selected three, three plants, uh, and then uh, uh, BC to F1 plants, uh, this were uh, crossed in combinations, different combination to generate the three different F2s. And from these three different F2s, uh, these uh, 70, uh, 70 uh, approximately 78 lines were uh, having both the QTL some uh, and the some of them uh, ab approximately 10 12 of the pyramided lines having the both the QTL in homozygous condition with respect to markers that were selected and what we observed that the pyramided lines has 20 9 percent lesser disease severity as compared to either of the QTL uh, in the same background. And we have also observed that uh, the uh, single QTL in the background CM140 that uh, has a different pattern of uh, resistance uh, as compared to its uh, from the donor line, like uh, uh, CM139 donor line for the QSLB 3.1. When this QTL was present in CM140, its disease reaction is different. It uh, from that we can concluded that background uh, effect is there. There may be always a negative or the uh, positive alleles uh, which affects the inter uh, or the, the QTL in its vicinity. Okay. So you not not all. So we have not seen with with combined QTL. Uh, definitely disease severity has reduced and uh, we got good lines. But with single QTL in the same background, uh, we have not got uh, got the lines up to the donor parents. So uh, the shoot fly, uh, we have also identified the genomic uh, regions which are associated with the componential traits uh, with respect to the shoot fly. Like in SLB, there is straightforward uh, that you can score the disease from the leaf, uh, how much region is covered, sphere T is there. But in shoot fly, there is not single trait on that basis. You can identify that this is the resistant uh, 
plant or the susceptible plant. You have to go through the number of componential traits. So for each componential traits, we evaluated for the shoot fly uh, resistance. Like uh, this is the OV position number of eggs that shoot flight has laid and we use the fish meal technique for the shoot fly and it is this uh, this species Arthurian nequi is different from the uh, species uh, which affects the uh, which uh, 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 on the sorghum that is sorghetta in here it is nequi and we have uh, this taken the leaf injury data seedling vigor and this uh, Ceiling vigor uh, here is the uh, with good. See, uh, one score is given which have good ceiling vigor and five which has the poor ceiling vigor and the glossiness of the leaf and the uh, pigmentation of the sheet. Okay, and the pigmented was uh, considered as uh, less uh, lesser disease uh, severity as compared to the uh, this one. And finally, the dead hearts which are formed. Okay, and uh, approximately 19 putative cuticles for the shoot fly. This componential traits were uh, mapped, and uh, all these componential uh, genetics of all these componential traits we studied uh, separately. And some of the traits that showed over dominance, some has partial dominance, and some has additive gene action. Especially this sheet uh, coloration, uh, they showed over dominance trait, and. Uh, and uh, we have mapped the QTL regions uh, on the for the dead heart and uh, OV position, or you can say egg count uh, on the chromosome nine. They are the, both these QTLs are overlapping, co uh, coinciding. And this region of chromosome nine, when we do synteny mapping, because earlier paper came only in the sorghum for shoot fly register, so we did the synteny mapping also. And this region is uh, corresponding to the chromosome ten of the sorghum. Same. So we can say this. There is all uh, definitely some orthologs genes are present uh, which are conferring resistance to this uh, shoot fly. So this is a preliminary work we have done for the mapping of QTL with the fusarium stock rot. This is a fusarium stock rot, uh, it, uh, it is soil point uh, which uh, uh, actually post flowering stock rots is a uh, caused by number of species of fusarium. And this is one of the fusarium verticelloids on which we have targeted and it uh, causes up to 40% of yield losses. And uh, the inoculation is done by the toothpick method fungus were uh, grown in the jam jars from there we we put the toothpicks and uh, on that fungus grow that toothpicks were inoculated or uh, to the second internod of the stock of the maze okay then after 7 or 14 days we take the split the uh, this uh, stock uh, you can say till uh, tiller and uh, uh, score the data this is just the scoring pattern minimum one score and up to this when uh, it crosses the four or five uh, internodes uh, susceptible parent. This is the toothpick we have shown. And uh, this uh, fusarium stock rot comes both in creep season and the spring season also. So in both season we have evaluated the real population of the cross of LM5 into CM140. And in both seasons, when the data was in, analyzed individually as well as in combined, we found that it uh, that a consistent QTL was present on chromosome 3. And explaining up 21% uh, of the phenotypic, 22% uh, of phenotypic variance with additive gene effects. Now, uh, from last four or five years, we are also facing a problem with the bacterial stock rot, which is caused by Arvenia chrysomenthi. And uh, it is uh, one of the important disease and uh, just gained, uh, you can say, significance in, in the rec recent years. And it especially comes in the creep season. And when it comes, it causes yield losses up to uh, 100% even. Okay, if it is a very... Uh, 
you can see from so in this why this disease is actually very devastating because in maize in punjab we have the maize potato rotation cropping system so potato is an alternate host for that uh, arvenia stock rot so it persists when we grow maize it then the disease uh, occur and with the results obtained for so when we have evaluated the uh, f2 population of cross of cm143 into cm144 that cm144 is uh, resistant to the uh, arvenia stock rot and uh, after analyzing f2 as well as f23 progenies we uh, yes you can see come to the conclusion that it show diagenic inheritance with no dominance effect so the genetic inheritance seems to be additive in it and also uh, uh, when we uh, made the classes of its uh, different uh, uh, disease score then we also come to the known that some minor modified genes are there which affects the expression of these two genes and uh, uh, using a bulk segregant analysis two protective regions were identified that are on chromosome 1 and 6 which are corresponding uh, uh, clearly showing that this its uh, genetics is under the diagenic control then coming to the this projects on the heat stress uh, we uh, because uh, spring maize is coming up so we have to work on the heat stress uh, responsive genes we have to identify and uh, uh, for this my uh, phd student has worked on this uh, and dr senthil actually evaluated his thesis <laughs> so we we have done the transcriptomic analysis from the two lines one lm elan which is highly susceptible to the heat stress and cml 25 which is highly tolerant to the heat stress and during uh, that season in 2017 we uh, we got a heat stress of up to 42 degree celsius and uh, at that when uh, the uh, test uh, you can say silk emerges we have taken the samples from the three different tissues pollen uh, flag leaf and the uh, uh, growing uh, you can say kernels ovules ovules we have dissected the ovules and then we have gone for the trans comparative transcriptome analysis and identified the differential express genes and uh, and uh, from this you can see very less there are uh, common genes are present all are different mostly only seven of the genes are common among all the three tissues so it is clearly indicate that each tissue has its own type of genes which are expressing at during that reproductive phase and this is the heat map which generated and uh, we classify those uh, differential express gene into different uh, like transcription factor heat responsive genes polyamine this first uh, a, uh, a1 uh, figures is on the transcription factor which are up regulated in both uh, this leaf pollen and ovule and the transcription factor which are uh, down regulated in the, uh, these three tissues and this uh, the is uh, belonging to the heat stress responsive genes and uh, most of the genes uh, in case of leaf uh, are down regulated as compared to the pollen uh, and ovule in which there is uh, up regulation of the heat responsive genes and these are the polyamine genes in the d figure and these uh, polyamine gene which are uh, seven common genes so these seven common genes which are expressed similarly in all the three tissue so there must be some uh, coordination of these uh, polyamine genes so we have to target these polyamine genes if we want to develop the heat tolerant lines so uh, the study was further carried down, uh, out uh, by identifying the variants uh, among these differentially expressed genes in terms of snps and the 
indels okay and this uh, uh, maximum of the snip variants are present in the ovule uh, followed by the pollen and then the leaf and from these variants uh, uh, we have identified which uh, which are causing the you can say missense mutation or synonymous uh, ones or non synonymous snips we have identified and from those uh, which are uh, uh, snips uh, we, uh, we have uh, developed the casp markers from that okay that casp markers then validated on uh, this uh, few lines and then also applied on the mapping population of f2 of lm11 into cm cml25 okay so this this is the map which we have generated with this uh, using the cast marker and the ssr markers uh, and we have mapped uh, these qtls for the different traits like leaf firing on chromosome 1 3 and chromosome 4 and this kernel per year uh, and the plant uh, figure on chromosome 6 grain yield on chromosome 7 so canopy temperature and spad value in chromosome 9 so in this way we have uh, from the transcriptional data we developed the markers and did the genomics also and also uh, uh, one of our breeder has the collaboration with the cement hyderabad from there we have uh, the panel was came of 662, 662 double haploid lines uh, that panel was uh, evaluated at our PAU center for two years uh, uh, for the heat stress okay for, and the genomic uh, this GBS data was available with them so we generated the phenotypic data and then uh, collaborate uh, in collaboration with them we done the GWAS analysis and identified the uh, you can say uh, genomic region which are associated with the heat stress tolerance. So uh, it, in total 176 SNPs were associated with various agronomic traits under normal and the heat stress condition. Out of this 176, 46 were uh, associated for the heat stress condition. Rest of uh, for the under normal conditions and uh, a total of 15 SNPs were uh, you can say co-localized with multiple traits which are co-localized with multiple traits we are targeting that regions because uh, uh, that has the pleiotropic effect that will be beneficial for the breeder to select for the uh, against one, one trait for multiple traits you can select simultaneously okay and uh, uh, with that regions we also explored for the candidate genes uh, approximate and also we did the hyplotype mapping in this one is the GWAS based on the SNP and the haplotype regression analysis. In that also we identified some of the uh, SNPs which are common with that and uh, uh, 9 and 7 candidate genes were identified which are significant to have the role in the heat stress tolerance. So this uh, for drought tolerance also we have uh, after screening the germ plasm identifying the lines which are tolerant or susceptible we have generated mapping population and map the qtl and uh, after mapping that qtl drought tolerance qtl because now drought tolerance is not uh, a problem under punjab condition the, the work started earlier but now so what we did we uh, we have find its advantage in the spring season that uh, drought tolerant QTL was identified uh, when we have evaluated our lines uh, under the uh, summer season. Okay, now uh, this uh, in spring season, although uh, farmers are very reluctant to so go for the spring season because it gives yield of uh, approximately 30 to 32 quintal per hectare. Okay, so they are very much interested, but uh, this uh, spring maize is equivalent to rice. Because because uh, during that uh, spring maize is sown uh, in uh, late uh, January or early February, and its uh, reproductive phase uh, coincides with the heat stress during the April and then May 
uh, month. So during that, uh, to overcome the heat stress, farmer has to uh, irrigate their fields after every two days or uh, next day. So it it is this uh, our we usually to say it is a second rise in the spring season. So what we thought, why not this QTL can be used uh, to transfer this QTL in the spring lines to make it water use efficient. OK, so we have transferred this QTL into the two lines, uh, which is the uh, inbreds, which are the uh, you can say parental lines of the promising hybrid of spring maize PMH 10. That is LM 23 and, and LM 24. And uh, by uh, this same crossing scheme, uh, marker assisted uh, uh, breeding crossing scheme, we use to transfer this QTL, uh, which is present on chromosome 9 for the kernel number. And we transfer it into the background of LM23 and LM24. After transferring, we evaluated those lines under the uh, limited irrigation and the normal irrigation during the, during the spring season and identified some 12 promising lines which are very much responsive to the limited irrigations. So now uh, breeders has made a crosses and developed the uh, improved, we can say, hybrid that will maybe uh, come under the crypt uh, trials for evaluation. So this is the story of drought tolerance. How from drought tolerance QTL we have went to the water use efficiency. So wh when uh, whatever you research go, you always think where it will be utilized. Only then it is uh, beneficial. If you don't utilize in your breeding program, then there is no, uh, it lies only in the papers. So you have to go for the translational research. Water logging is now because the, uh, there is shift in the rainfall pattern. So during this July and August, uh, when we saw in the crop in the June, water logging is a major constraint for the and it is very, very sensitive to the water logging stair. If the water stand for two or three days, it will uh, the crop will fail. But uh, we have identified some of the promising lines which are very good uh, responsive to the waterlogging stress. And one of the line is I-172. And that we crossed with the highly susceptible line I-110. And uh, from in the F23 population, you see the effect of the waterlogging stress in F23 families with no kernel ranging to minimum. And uh, this is the parental lines without stress and in after stress and uh, we identify number of the QTLs, but the uh, phenotypic variance is not more than 15% some of the QTLs and the, whatever the, we identified the QTL, the uh, you can say interval is very big. That is 15 to 20 centi Morgan. So we have to find map those uh, regions. Now in the DBT center, uh, center of excellence uh, program, we have received a project on this uh, for uh, fine mapping of this QTL for uh, water logging tolerance uh, and then uh, uh, identify the candidate genes and uh, develop the uh, transfer it into the elite backgrounds. During this, uh, uh, also we have, uh, we want to study the mechanism of uh, the water logging uh, tolerance in uh, one of that line. So these both two lines under the stress condition, we, uh, we have studied the and aerobic polypeptide, which is known already, which uh, are responsive uh, in the water logging stand under the hypoxia condition. And those uh, anaerobic polypeptide, as well as uh, during that days, the paper came on MRI, miRNA targets also. From that, uh, uh, approximately 123 miRNA target genes were selected and the primers were designed and we were uh, investigating our material. And we found that uh, there is a totally different mechanism followed in the resistance and the susceptible line. In the resistance, uh, normally we, uh, this uh, you can say, uh, this uh, pyruvate kinase, alanine amino transferase and MAPK genes are the upregulated. Where is in sus uh, susceptible lines, uh, uh, they, there is a uh, uh, upregulation of genes for the sucrose synthase, alcohol dehydrogenase and the aspartate amino transferase. All these genes are upregulated in the susceptible, they are energy consuming lines in the oxygen deprivations. And this uh, uh, alcohol dehydrogenase is so much uh, over 
expressed uh, that it causes due to that uh, uh, ethanol uh, causes ethanol toxicity due to that uh, it uh, uh, you this uh, plant showed susceptibility or it die uh, uh, approximately 90% mortality is there in case of uh, i110 so in this way we have come up with some of the mechanism which is involved in the uh, tolerance of the water logging stress and recently we have started uh, work on the uh, some of the wild relatives uh, we have uh, procured from the nbpgr and uh, from dr nk singh uh, from the bihar side i think and uh, because uh, uh, we are facing a nowadays we are facing you might have heard a uh, problem on the kylo as well as the fall army worm okay this uh, and some of the uh, teosintil uh, this lines uh, species uh, showed a moderate level of uh, resistance to that uh, tolerance to those uh, pests and uh, we have crossed uh, it is uh, under initial stages and developed the material in different backgrounds then also we have procured the second generation haploid inducer stock uh, from the cement uh, for uh, developing the for going for the accelerated breeding through double haploid technology and uh, uh, this p1 uh, is for the earlier generation uh, haploid inducer and second generation haploid inducer so 13.10.19 uh, 19% uh, is the haploid uh, induction rate with the second generation of uh, of the haploid inducer and we have optimized the protocol for the chromosome doubling uh, using the haploid inducer stocks and uh, and uh, optimized all the concentration of the chemicals and the stage for the doubling of the chromosome and we have generated approximately 218 double haploid lines and under high planting density 22 donor lines were selected from this material one of my student uh, he, he uh, recently he just uh, very eager he is from tnau uh, <laughs> that uh, krishna kanhatma i don't know you, you may be known him krishna sain kanhatma he uh, actually he he's working on uh, the shoot flight and bandy leaf sheet flight resistance on the cement panel we have also again we have procured the panel from the cement and he has to go for the gvos dwell the training population and go for the genomic selection okay and uh, in the free time he did some this meta qtl analysis for the root rates in the maze and uh, very uh, smartly he identified the 68 meta qtls and from the databases also for those 68 qtl regions whatever the genes are present or transcriptome data was uh, there he tried to uh, correlate those regions and identified some promising genes which are responsible for the root architecture that can be used to improve the root architecture of the maze and uh, lastly we have also initiated some uh, program in the genome editing in maize specifically one of my colleague is working on the matrilineal gene uh, to create the and uh, she has uh, the, that we have optimized some of the protocol and targeted this gene for uh, knockout in the lm13 uh, background and uh, using the rnp approach and we got three positive plants uh, out of which one plant depicted one base substitution and uh, this uh, by allelic mutation was uh, observed in uh, plant number 21 this approach uh, like we are, have not used the vector system we have used the ribonucleoprotein uh, system uh, crispr cas9 and uh, we have successfully generated those but uh, there is a uh, you can say failure in this case uh, what uh, in uh, next generation we have uh, not got that uh, uh, you can say heritability it may be a transient transient we thought it so we are uh, working on it again we are developing new uh, you can say immature embryos that we are uh, regularly transforming and uh, 
maybe and now we have also designed a vector with different guide rnas uh, and uh, also she got training recently from the usa under the bing yang lab which is a very uh, group working on the genome editing and from there he she uh, got skills on the prime editing so we may follow that one also so thank you for your patience so thank you doctor giving the wide picture on uh, what the yeah. ai is doing yeah. all the lines yeah. the genome editing also one of the interesting area for us uh, maybe uh, that you are initiated and the diaploid productions as you told uh, some lines uh, improved efficiency yeah. how it is uh, the progressing on that so uh, some of the line inducer stocks we have dwelled in our uh, material and they are giving uh, approximately 15% induction rate and uh, we have uh, now headset protocol and going for the double haploid production what do you suggest if you want to establish the dh facility uh, so what kind of uh, difficulties are there to yeah do difficulties that? we need uh, the Uh, when we are giving the colchicine treatment, actually uh, that uh, optimization conditions uh, or what is the stage uh, we have to see. Okay. Otherwise, there is no much uh, infrastructure is required for this double haploid production. Thank you for the nice presentation, madam. I just wanted to know. I think uh, I understood from your uh, slide that you are working or you are making hybridization between tyosint and maize. Yeah. Now for Kylo Bartolas as well as for the uh, bending. Form. Yeah, yeah, form. Okay. Yeah. And I just wanted to know, I'm I'm from uh, 4A side, huh? whether the TO synth is having perennialty in the F1 man. You are making a hybridization. Yeah. Is there any perennialty uh, experience with the F1 hybrid, which could be perpetuated further? for forage purpose yeah yeah i'm interested in that yes yes i yes. just wanted to know yes yes we that is a uh, we are not getting after backcross we get on type maize type only otherwise in f1 there are uh, tillering is there that can be used for forage purposes how about the regeneration ma'am upon uh, cutting the f1 i, I we have not you have not tested that not, oh. not. district director cpmb and uh, dean school of post graduate studies chief guest of the day Professor and Head Biotechnology, Faculty and Students. Good afternoon to all. First of all, we'd like to place our gratitude to our Vice Chancellor, for pro who has made a provision for students to be hearing from, to be benefited from the rich experience of scientists from all over the nation. We thank the Director CPMB and Dean School School of Postgraduate Studies, who's very keen in facilitating and improving the standards of PG education. We are very grateful to you, Madam, for sharing your. Uh, very rich experience, scientific experience i'm and i'm sure our students will be motivated you also mentioned that one of our alumnus has been very doing a smart work i'm sure that should be motivating our students and we expect more of our students to come over to move over to your lab also i thank uh, all the senior faculties professor and head uh, biotechnology all the faculty and students for attending this lecture thank you one and all